It's Monday, February 15th, 2016. This is a regular meeting of the Board of Education of Salem City Schools. The entire meeting is open to the public. Bob, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Bailey? Present. Mrs. Beck? Present. Mr. Bricker? Present. Mr. Moffitt? Present. Mr. Roadletter? Present. All members are present. This is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is a meeting open to the public, but it is not an open public meeting. There is a time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in the agenda. Please fill out a yellow card if you wish to speak. A limit of three minutes per person to speak shall be allowed. The public may address the board only during the public request portion of the agenda. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Reading, correcting, and approving the minutes, please. Yes, Doug, second to Angie. Uh, any corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, Bob? Mr. Moffitt? Yes. Mrs. Beck? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Bricker? Yes. Mr. Roadletter? Yes. Those are passed by the motion to uh, reading for the reading, correcting, and approving the agenda for tonight. So moved. Steve? Second? Yes, second. Doug? Okay. Um, we have one correction that I know of, 16148. We need to add the words effective January 8, 2016 to that uh, motion. Any other changes or corrections? Bob, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Moffitt? Yes. Mrs. Beck? Yes. Mr. Bricker? Yes. Mr. Roadletter? Yes. Motion passed 5 0. Our first item is superintendent's report. I'll turn it over to Dr. Shivers. Um, I've been asked about what's, what the difference is in standardized testing this year, uh, uh, the uh, state required standardized testing this year as opposed to last year. And um, the picture looks better. So um, last year we had two uh, test providers. One was called PARC, the uh, Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers. And the name was as, as long as the... Uh, the time it took us to, to, to learn that system. Um, one evaluation of the system, um, uh, uh, an education writer said, even, uh, who took the uh, test, uh, the park test, even after going through the tutorial explaining the interface, I found myself as, uh, occasionally as preoccupied with the system as I was with figuring out the math problems. That's not what we want. It was so confusing. Students had to change page. It's online. They had to change pages. Remember what they saw on, on, the, uh, on, on the second page. Come back to the first page. Try to answer the question. In any case, PARC is out. They, last year, they uh, gave the, the uh, math and ELA, that is English Language Arts Test. Uh, that's been, uh, that contract has been given to AIR, the uh, American Institute for Research, um, that last year provided science and social studies tests. So they'll be doing all the testing this year. Um, that's the big difference. They're, it's much more user friendly. I wish that Erin or Tim were here to explain some of the problems with hardware, with software that, that we experience with PARC. Uh, so we expect that testing is going to uh, be, uh, be smoother. Um, uh, uncertainty is a potent source of stress. And there was a lot of uncertainty, not just in grade three, but all the way up through grade 12. And uh, the students are uh, stressed enough about that. Another kind of minor changes, schools now will not be, there's legislation pending, schools will not be punished as they were last year if students decide to opt out. If parents want to opt their students out of the test, the schools will not be punished by marking, uh, by having a zero for that uh, test marked uh, on their report card. And the last thing is um, uh, time will be reduced. So the 20 tests that we give, uh, grade three through um, uh, high school end of course, that we'll give 20 standardized tests. Three will have the same amount of time. Um, Sixteen will be reduced in time, anywhere from 39% less time to 50% less time. So that's a, a great thing for us. Um, we have more time for instruction. Uh, sadly, uh, Cindy, one test uh, will increase one half hour, and it will be the English language arts third grade exam. Um, they must have thought that our youngest kids uh, didn't, uh, didn't uh, uh, they, they needed more time um, on the exam. In any case, um, that's the only 
the test that's going to be longer this year. So, um, in general, it's a positive response. It can still be better. My guess is there will be changes made um, in legislation uh, over the summer or, or next year uh, to get the, the scores out sooner, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, um, we're, we're mildly happy with these changes, particularly with, with Park uh, uh, being, uh, being uh, moved out. Uh, the second thing I have, we have great news. Um, the uh, seventh grade girls uh, basketball team uh, finished the season undefeated. Uh, they won their league. Uh, we play in a very competitive league. And perfection is a rare enough thing. And to achieve it at any level, in any endeavor, is, uh, is a remarkable achievement. And our kids did. I'd like to introduce the coach, Glenn Windrum. Um, let's stand up. We'll say something about the season and introduce the girls. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the board for uh, giving me the opportunity. Let's put that way so the camera gets I know. Uh, I would like to thank the board for giving me the opportunity to uh, work with these young ladies this year. Uh, this was a unique group. Um, I just I don't know that I've ever had a group like that. Uh, when I go home from practice, my wife, if if she's speaking to me, all you know, will say, well, "How was practice?" And uh, this has gone on over a number of years that we've been married, and I kind of have my own system, and we don't share some of those, you know, levels, but. Uh, I would say I'd come home from practice with these girls. Say, How was practice? I said, really good, great, you know, uh, super. You know, I was running out of uh, adjectives to describe. And one night she said, do these girls ever have a bad practice? And I said, I'm beginning to think that they don't. Uh, and, you know, I don't know that one time during the season uh, that, that we had a bad practice. We got to the last night and I was running out of time for my annual kick the ball across the gym in frustration. Uh, and so uh, somebody made a bad pass or something, so I took a ball and just kicked it across there. But uh, these, these ladies were just outstanding this year. I'd like to introduce them now. Uh, we've got Hallie Cochran, Tyler, Twink, Tyler Jamison, Kelly Hutton, Alexis Miller, Sierra Hobson. Annie Davidson, Casey Johnson, Kate Bailey, and Anna Henderson. I have three young ladies who couldn't be here tonight Elena Economist, uh, Kaylin uh, Helmick, and uh, Skylar Green. So, um, to, to these ladies, I'd just like to, to say that, uh, you know, your accomplishments this year, as Dr. Shiver said, uh, were it, it's pretty amazing to go through a season undefeated. Your first season in interscholastic uh, basketball, and uh, you know people will say, "Well, what, what do you do for next year?" It reminds me of the story. Uh, go back in time. Well, Dr. Shires and I probably remember this, but maybe nobody else in the room here. But uh, the famous baseball pitcher for the Cleveland Indians, Bob Feller, one time he he pitched a no hitter on opening day. And after the game, one of the writers was asking him, well, what are you going to do the next time out? He said, well, I'll try to improve on my performance from today, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's kind of what these girls are going to have to have to do. If I could just share a couple of quick stats uh, with you. Uh, each year, my goal in coaching junior high girls basketball is to score an average of 40 points a game. We scored slightly over 41 this year, so we did that, and that's that's pretty darn good for 24 minutes of basketball. Um, we tried to give up fewer than 20 points. We gave up 18, and so we accomplished that. And the only team stat that I have, the only one that really means anything to me other than the final score, is our foul shooting statistics. And I I think that tells a lot about the young ladies that that we have here. Uh, we shot slightly over 64% from the free throw line for the season. Now, I know all of you know basketball, but I'm not sure how many people know what a good foul shooting percentage is. I always am, all of our drills are based on the idea that we would try to shoot 70%, and uh, <clears throat> that's really kind of a pretty pie in the sky goal. And I told the girls when I when I figured the, the uh, percentage out that 
it would, I, would, I would bet, I don't have the data, uh, but there are probably, there are just about 100 teams that played basketball in Columbia County this year. When you figure high school, J, varsity, JV, freshman, junior high, 7th, 8th grade, boys and girls, about 100 teams in Columbia County that played basketball this year. And I am willing to bet that no more than 10 of those teams, whether you're talking about boys varsity or girls varsity or whatever, shot anything like that. Um, I think that's just a remarkable uh, accomplishment. It shows how these girls work to do the little things. Um, they, they put their time in and, and their dedication, and uh, they, they truly were a joy to, to work with this year. And uh, I, um, I wish them well in their future, and uh, I know that they'll continue to, to strive to be the best team. They all know there's a target on their back now. Everybody's going to be after them next year. You got Louisville before you, before <laughs> before we got rid of Louisville, and uh, um, just uh, w one wish for you here. Just one second here. Okay. I, I hope to be at the board meeting five years from now when you're being recognized for the next team from Salem. Got to be the Lady Quakers Final Four. This was the last time, 2003, 2004, I was fortunate to be a part of that team. And I'm looking forward to the day when you guys make it. Good luck. Congratulations. We'll look forward to seeing you next year. Um, at this point, we're going to move on with our agenda, but uh, if anyone in the audience would like to leave, we'll take a short break here. <laughs> Turn to get out of here, girls. You better run. <laughs> nice job, man. Thank you. Hey, good job. My wife just got back from five days in Tampa, Arizona. i got to take her to Valentine's Day dinner. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay, we'll return to our agenda. Uh, next, we have um, two presentations. Uh, Cindy, are you first? Are you guys flip a coin? Okay. Uh, tonight we have a special presentation from Mrs. Carr's class, Ms. Huebner's class, and Ms. Milburn's class. Aniston, Luke, Aiden, and Kendall. We are in Mrs. Carr's class and have been studying all about economics. To help us with this concept, we decided to start our own business. We created a business plan and ultimately decided to, to produce s'mores pops to sell to the students at Riley. S'mores pops are chocolate-covered marshmallows dipped in graham crackers. We thought this would be a good product to sell because of Valentine's Day. We made our s'mores pops, packaged them, and sold them all last week. The third and fourth graders at Riley were very excited to have a special, special treat and love supporting our business. I say what's amazing. We made a profit of $420. <clears throat> we would especially like to thank these area businesses, Giant Eagle, Heggies, and Dollar Tree. Without these generous donations, our sale would not have been possible. We decided to donate our profit to the Salem Turf Project. Please accept our donation on behalf of the Mighty Marshmallow Makers and Riley, and Riley Elementary students and staff. Thank you.
Good job. 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 Mighty marshmallow makers, did I get that right? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can try this. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming out on Thank such a miserable you. night. Kids, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your day Thank off. You. Marshmallows. <laughs> 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 so nervous this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wish I could be as entertaining or cute as, as my fellow partners up here, but I'm, uh, what I wanted to do tonight is just give you a little update on our third grade reading guarantee. I'll basically try to do a, a kind of a snapshot for you front and back. Uh, if you have questions as I go through, please feel free to ask. If, uh, hopefully I'll know the answer. If not, I will definitely find out for you. The most significant change in the third grade reading guarantee this year has just been they changed the reading assessment itself. We are in the third year of full implementation of third grade reading guarantee. It has such a huge impact on our kids. Um, and so to this year, the significant change with the reading assessment change um, has, uh, has, has been a big change for us. So to make this easy to understand, I made two columns, uh, what we uh, dealt with last year and what we are dealing with this year as far as the actual assessment. Uh, in the past, we have done uh, the OAA as our reading assessment, which only assessed reading. This year, as Dr. Shivers already told you about, we are uh, switched over to the AIR, ELA, English Language Arts. So it is both reading and there is a writing component as well, where the students are asked to write a, from a prompt one to three paragraphs on a particular topic. In third grade, that is a lot. Um, the, when we knew that the error test was going to be the new assessment, we were anxiously waiting them to release sample questions. Sample questions are important for us. Uh, not that we teach the test, but we want to prepare our kids for the types of questions that are going to be on the test. Uh, kids can miss questions, not because they don't understand the content, but they don't understand how the question is is being designed and, and how to actually go about um, answering such a question. Uh, the questions were released late October and they released seven questions. Out of the seven, there was one writing prompt, one extend, or a short answer, and five multiple choice. But when the test came out, the, there were many different types of questions that weren't released. So with the OAAs, it was something that we were comfortable with. We've had it for many years. We had many samples. So we are in the beginning process of this. Uh, and I think the most many educators that I, I have spoken to, um, both principals and teachers, we all agree it was a very challenging test for our kiddos. Uh, and again, it's challenging because it's new and it's something that we have to get used to. Uh, the test administration um, it was a little bit different. Last year in the OAA, we had one day, and they had a maximum of two and a half hours to complete the test. This year, there are two parts to the test. Uh, so it spans over two days, uh, only an hour and a half for each day. Uh, we give the test fall and spring for every student uh, and then summer for those kids who still need the promotion score. For third grade, there are two scores that we do look at. Uh, first is promotion score. And the promotion score determines if the student may advance to fourth grade the following year. And then there's the proficiency score. The proficiency score determines the level of mastery of third grade concepts. Uh, again, when we give this, this test in the fall, uh, you know, we're trying to get as many, of course, to hit the promotion score, and if they hit the, the proficiency score, it's a great thing. But again, it is based on third grade concepts, and we've only been in school three and a half months. So we still have a lot of learning and a lot of teaching to go. So we don't panic if they don't hit that proficiency right out of the gate. We know that we have a lot of, of teaching coming and a lot of learning coming, and we definitely expect to see improvements as the year goes on. The promotion scores and the proficiency scores look a little different. Last year, it was pretty much on the same scale. The promotion score was a 394, proficiency was a 400. So they lined up. Uh, what they did was, is they knew that proficiency was 400. They dropped it down a few points saying that even though they didn't quite make proficiency, it was close enough that we could fill those gaps in, in fourth grade. 
This year, it was a, the scores look a lot different. If you look at the chart, a promotion score is a 42, and a proficiency score is a 700. Well, their explanation for this is that uh, the 42 is based on the reading section only. They took the writing section out to come up with that score. Uh, the 700 is when they combine both the reading and the writing together to come up with 700. So those are the scores that we're looking at. Now the state also, what they do not want is thousands and thousands of third graders being retained. So because of that, they give us a little caveat, which is alternative assessment. And these are assessments uh, that are approved by ODE that the district can purchase. Um, and they're not forced to give them, but you would be wise to give an alternative assessment. Uh, the three that are listed here on your chart are the three that were approved by ODE. We currently use the Terra Nova 3. We are able to give an alternative assessment twice throughout the year and once in the summer. It gives the students an extra chance to hit the promotion score. This has nothing to do with proficiency, but has everything to do with promotion. Um, what we end up doing is, is once we get those scores back in the fall, from the fall scores, we go right into the mode of let's give you the alternative assessment. And I will share with you the results. We already gave the Terra Nova. We, we ended up getting the results back from the AIR ELA January 29th. The, that was a Friday. The following week we were giving the Terra Nova. We finished it up last week. It is very important for us if there are kids in jeopardy being retained to give them an extra chance right away. Um, and then what we will do is we'll give this, the AIR ELA will be given in the spring. And then in May, beginning of May, we will give the other alternative assessment to those students still needing it. And then, of course, there will be summer school. Uh, we do not get the results back from the spring uh, ELA uh, test until about, I think it's the 16th of June. And then they give the July test, like July, I think it's 11th this year. So by the time you get those scores back, you have a very short turnaround to start your summer school and get, get that remediation going. Uh, it's a tight turnaround. But that is how the system is set up. Are there any questions about last year to this year, anything before I go on? I don't want to assume that. Who grades the tests? Are they all computer-based or are they? Are you, uh, the, as far as the AIR ELA? E and yeah, any yeah, the AIR ELA is all something that we, is, they put their answers in, in the book, we send them out. Now, with the Terra Nova, you have to contact <coughs> the publisher of the test. Terra Nova 3 is a, is a full battery test. It has not only reading, but it has grammar, it has social studies, science, and math. It's a full book. And it's all multiple choice. There is nothing, you know, really too subjective about it. So when we contacted and we ordered all the books, we talked about grading and how do we send them in. And they said, actually, you can purchase the score book and the norms book, and you can grade them yourself because they are all multiple choice. There's nothing there. You know, because you're only using part of the test, uh, it would be silly to pay the, the scoring fee. The ODE gives you the score and, of, of what it is. And this year it's 599. Last year it was 596. You look in the norms book to see how many they have to get right in there, and that's how we go about with the alternative assessment. It's a little bit different. All right. Are we okay? All right. When you turn over, these are the actual results. The first chart talks about the total number of students that were given the AIR ELA test. This was in December of 2015. Uh, total number of students, 144. Those are 144 students sitting in our third grade seat. If there are a third grader in our building, everyone takes the test. Um, the next one says earn the promotion score of 42 or higher. We had 107 students who earned the promotion score of 42 or higher right from the get-go. But what that did was left us 37 students who did not. Those are the kids that we hone in on right away because at that point they are still in jeopardy of, of being retained. Now we are still very, very early in the race, but it is something that we're not comfortable with. We want to make sure that we get as many of them passed as possible. So <coughs> that the following week we started administering the Terra Nova. The one thing that we need to know is just so that you can line up the numbers, um, 37 students did not uh, score their promotion, but four of those are exempt due to IEPs. So because of their, they are exempt, we do not go ahead and give them the Terra Nova. We do not need to retest them anymore. They are exempt. Okay, after we gave this, the, so we ended up giving 33 students the Terra Nova test. 
um, after we completed all the tests, 28 students earned the promotion score. So we took that, that 33 and got 28 of them to pass. Okay? And then that left us five who yet, who still, we are still working on. Those are kiddos who are in intense intervention, absolutely, and that we're watching out for. Um, ironically, out of the five, four of them are ELL students. These are students who work very hard in the classroom. When we meet with the teachers, they work very hard. They're making great gains and are actually doing very well. But they have an added layer of challenge because not only are they learning our, our language, but they're, it's the experience stuff that they're reading about to try and put the pieces of the puzzle together. So with more exposure to our language and to our stories, um, you know, we are confident in, that, you know, that they will, you know, continue to improve and we'll take them as far as we can, we can take them. They work very, very hard and, and like I said, our teachers are very much committed into helping them, uh, you know, grow uh, as far as we can get them to grow. So that is where we're at right now. Like I said, we take that five very seriously and we will continue to work very, very hard with all of them. Uh, as far as the number of students earning proficiency, we have 42 who got that 700 score. Um, again, it's, it's not a great number, but it's a number that, that is not unexpected, I believe, with the change of the assessments. So I wanted to give you a little bit of reference as far as where we're at, where we're at with the state. Uh, state average for promotion score, um, basic promotion score is right around 47. We're right there. State average proficiency score is a 683. We're at a 680, so we're in the ballpark. We've got to get them to 700. Again, with more exposure and, and, and all of that is what we're hoping. We also brought um, in the county, we had two consultants come in on February 3rd. Uh, they were able to give us some additional training, and they have a little bit of knowledge that they kind of get before us, so they were able to share that with our teachers. Um, the state is not uh, releasing any more sample questions now for the spring. What's out there is what's out there. So we have seven questions, which makes it very hard. Um, but one thing that they found out in their research is that AIR also provides Florida with the English language arts test as well. Florida has published on their uh, website some, a practice test. Now it's just one, but it looks very similar and will give us a, a few more sample questions to look for and to have our, our teachers kind of start mimicking some of their assessments just to make our kids more comfortable with that. So that is one more piece of resource that we're, we're adding to that as well. Any questions, anything I left out or any clarity that you need? I just wondered with some of the cultural shifts that we have even coming up, how there's going to be a larger number. I just wondered how all this testing, I just wondered how that was going to work. Right. Well, I'll tell you the one thing that, that um, it makes me very positive and, and makes me very happy is just when you when we sit down and we talk about the kids and the progress that they're making in the classroom, it leaves a balance. It's amazing how much we can take them in a short amount of time. So that is why I'm saying, well, we continue to work hard and, and just we in these intensive reading groups, um, I think the largest class that we have is nine. So it's, it's nine to one for two and a half hours. You know, And this is not just ELL. This is for all of our kiddos who need it. And this is how we've structured our, our language and, and, and reading in the third grade right now. So the kids who need the most help are getting a lot of intensive intervention. And, it, and, and I truly believe it's paying off. So we will continue to do that and then you know, research where we need to go from there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Kathy, just some marshmallows. <laughs> I have no marshmallows. I can't shoot Oh my gosh! What are you going to talk about? No, change. Okay. And if you don't mind, I, I need to sit. If I unless I have a podium to hold me up, I'm only good for five minutes. Okay, do not read ahead. Okay, I get to be the teacher right now. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. On the very, if you open up to the very first tab where it says state percentages, um, I put this together actually for you last month, but then I was ill and not able to be here. In the meantime, some things have changed, and I'll point that out as we, as we go through the booklet. But I tried to create this for you so that you would have something to refer back to uh, if you get some questions uh, once the actual report card hits 
the news, which is supposed to be at the end of this month. But this very first section on state percentages, uh, the old standard for all of our OAAs and OGTs used to be 75%. They raised it in the year 1314 to 80. Okay, we still perform very well at that level. I think we only had like one subject area that we, that we didn't meet the standard. But now if you look down, they've changed it for every single subject area. And if you'll notice the PERC test 65, 69, 64 in math and language arts, um, the air and social studies was a 70%. So it's no longer immediately obvious when you look at a bunch of scores on a paper whether or not we had a passing score. So please try to, try to be aware of that. Uh, that the, the game has changed somewhat. As you turn to the next page, you'll see that grade 10 English, uh, writing, math, science, social studies, and so on for 10 and 11 are the same as they were before. That's because that's the old OGT. We're no longer giving that. Okay, they're now uh, doing the end of year exams in the, in the different areas. So that will be probably the last time we'll see those. We'll probably see an 11th and a 12th grade score, but we will no longer be seeing the 10th grade scores. They did list uh, percentages for the end of course exams. We did very well in the Algebra 1, um, and we also did well in Geometry, although Geometry was a very select group. Only freshmen took these tests last year, uh, so it was only the freshmen who were really accelerated. We had a very small number, but they, they did well. Okay, the components are listed on the next page that will be on the report card and whether or not there will be a grade for them. We were going to look at achievement. In fact, we will look at it. Uh, however, it's been removed from the website and it's no, the statistics are no longer available in the Secure Data Center. And there's a reason for that. So achievement, the performance index and the indicators met. What I have in here for last, a month ago, are no longer credible. Gap closing has not been released yet. The progress, which is based on value added, has not been released yet. The graduation rate is, we will take a look at. K3 literacy, I'll try to explain. And prepared for success, I have some ideas on some things we're working on. Uh, to improve that, although we will not be getting a grade in that one. So then they give us some information on why the delay, but um, then they point out something that Joe mentioned earlier. It says, there no longer will be consequences tied to the results of the state test given in 14-15 and 15-16. And it says, additionally, the teachers and principals will not use the value-added rating from the state tests for, for those years as part of their evaluations. These had been tied to teacher and principal evaluations. However, you have to have two consecutive years of data to get one value added score. Uh, the chaos from last year that Joe mentioned with the park uh, and the fact that that, that testing has exited and another one has, has been brought in, uh, the fact that a number of students opted out. Uh, well, I'll point that out when we get to the achievement scores, but uh, districts have um, actually, someone actually uh, proposed a bill requiring ODE to issue two sets of scores, one that includes opt-outs and one without the opt-outs. And so I'm wondering if that's why these scores have been pulled but I will show you how it affected, how the opt-outs affected our scores when we get to that page. The next section is strictly for you, and it's on each of the sections of the report card. I'm not going to read this to you, um, but it goes through achievement, indicators met, performance index, which we'll look at next, uh, progress, how that is calculated, the graduation rate. Uh, what hurts us here in Salem is people who drop out or disappear. It's a transient population. Um, they 
use the div the divisor is the number of students the students who started as freshmen. So if you have kids that who drop out or kids who go somewhere else, but we don't, if they transfer, we're fine. If they don't transfer, then it counts against us. But we'll we'll look at graduation rate, gap closing. We do not have the data yet. This is where they take a look at all students. They take a look at all of the subgroups. For example, the English language learners are almost big enough at a few of our grade levels to be considered a sub subgroup. Uh, blacks, Hispanics, but primarily it's the economically disadvantaged student subgroup and students with disabilities, which we have a difficulty showing the same level of progress with them as we do with the normal population. But anyhow, that data is supposed to be at the end of the year. K-3 literacy I'm going to address, and also understanding the prepared for success I will address, even though we don't get a grade for that. I'm trying to go quickly, because I know your meeting's running a little behind. Okay, pull the tab that says um, Salem results. Okay, I also didn't present present this to display because of the fact that they're probably going to change. Um, these are not final data by any means, especially since these are the ones that they've pulled from the website and we can no longer access them. I put notes in the right-hand column for you. You'll notice that first as government, we had eight students take tests, two were proficient. Um, not enough students took it to give us a score, and that's because we had kids at the high school who boycotted that test and everybody opted out. The next set of tests are new tests to replace the OGT. We came kind of close in history, we came kind of close in physical science. English 1 we met, Algebra 1 we met, and Geometry we met. Uh, math one we would d did not meet, but again, that's a, a course where we had a lot of English language learners in that particular course. So I thought we did very well to, to score the percentages in those particular areas uh, because English one and Algebra one and Geometry were part tests, which were definitely the most difficult ones. Third grade reading, uh, Cindy talked about, that was the old OAA, we did very well. Um, and that score of 86.4% was students who were proficient. There were additional students who took the Terra Nova, who met the third grade reading guarantee. And I think we ended up with two students at the end of the year, one who was being tested for special education and the other one moved from the district before we could test him again. So we're, we're doing very well by the end of the third grade. Um, from the fourth grade, third grade mathematics on down, these were all computer-based. Math and reading were part. Science and social studies were air. And if you look at the red X's, that doesn't make us very happy. However, you have to look over at the number of students who took the test um, or the percentages. In fact, we don't have all of it. I, I looked at eighth grade science in particular because eighth grade science is coming out at 28.6%. They say 154 students took the test, but only 44 became proficient. What they don't tell you is that that test was given in two settings, the PBA and the EOI. Almost all of the kids took the PBA, 154. The EOY, we had probably close to 56, I think it was, students who opted out. So when their score was calculated, it was calculated on their first score and a zero for the second one, and they all failed. When you look at their actual scores for the first part, they did extremely well. So had they taken the second part, we probably would have had a very high, high rate of passage. But because they opted out, Okay, this is the reason I think that they are, uh, the bill was introduced to release scores with opt-outs and with, without opt-outs. I don't know if it's going to help us because 
most of the people who opted out opted out from both of them. So they didn't take any of them. We had a huge number in all of these courses, not a huge number, but at least 20, 20 to 50, who opted out after they took the first one, which already got them into the system to get a score, and so that's why. And again, we're not doing that badly on the part that they took. We're doing very well. So I thought you should know this. I mean, you're going to you're going to be getting some questions when when the data finally hits the newspaper. Joe, do you have anything to add to that? No, that's. Uh... Um, you know, as far as when we look at are our kids meeting the standards? Yes, they are. You know, are instructionally are they being taught what they need to be taught? Yes, they are. Um, it was just chaos last year with the tests and the park was so difficult and, and so uh, technically difficult to get into even I spent I know hours just trying to upload students names and their accommodations and having to change it um, anyhow we're, we're happy that it's gone I'm hoping uh, that we'll have much better results this year but it's a whole new system Okay, again, keep, keep in mind that impacts our value added and it's going to impact our uh, gap closing because of the number of students who opted out in the mid in midstream. Okay, from 10th grade on down, those are the old OGTs and again, we did very well. The only one we missed was science and again, 77.6 and um, the, the cut score was 80 before this cut, cut score was 75. Last year was the first year of change. So right. About right. Any questions on that? And again, I prepared this for you a month ago, and now it's no longer available. So I don't know what the new one's going to look like when it comes out, but I will get that information to you, or um, Joe can get it to you. The next page has our performance index with these results were at a C. We have been hovering with a very high B, very close to an A in performance index. Uh, I would expect that that will, will change as well. And primarily it's because of the kids who tested in at the limited and basic level because they opted out of the second part of the exam. Okay, next tab is K-3 literacy. <coughs> the K-3 literacy data, I, I have a little note here that we have to learn not to really be concerned if we're at 47.3%. And I'll give you the reason why. Somebody said, well, Columbiana is up in the 90%, so why are we at 47.3%? This uh, statistic is calculated on whether or not kids are on track for reading at kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. And they give a diagnostic test at the beginning of the year, say in kindergarten, and they say, okay, you know, in this case, 32 kids were not on track. So at the end of the year, how many of those improved to on track was 19. You have to consider something that we have here in Salem that they don't have in Columbiana and a number of other districts, and that's the English language learners. We have uh, 18 in kindergarten, uh, around 18 per class. Okay, when they if they come in and they're not speaking English, it's not that they're not smart, they're not intelligent, they can't speak English, they are not going to score well on a diagnostic reading test. So right off the bat, we've got a big percentage that we have to move to be on track by the end of the year. Now, we can't bring English language learners full spectrum in one year, you know. But we're doing very well by the end of third grade, bringing those kids up to the standard that they, they need to be to read. So we have to kind of develop, I think, a thick skin when it comes to this particular statistic um, because of the population that we're dealing with. 
The teachers are working hard. We've got a team at Buckeye that's, that's really working hard and doing some wonderful things, not only with the English language learners, but with all kids who are struggling to learn to read. And um, I think if we can get them to read by the end of third grade, we've done, we've done a marvelous job. And I think, I think the teachers are doing that. Any question on that K-3 literacy? Somebody's smiling down there. I think Angie's smiling. Next page is on the third grade reading guarantee. Cindy covered that very well. Uh, the next page is on uh, graduation rates. We're coming in right under the bubble to be up a grade. You know, 88.7 and we need um, 89 to have a B. Uh, again, I know this is a thorn in for Joe and for Sean, and uh, it's been something we've worked on for a long time. But it's it's a transient population that that hurts us on this statistic. The last one, prepared for success, and then I'll be quiet. Um, this one, we're not going to ever. I don't know if we'll never get a grade on it, but some of the things that we do extremely well on, for example, are AP exam scores of three or better. Uh, they just mark the percent of students that that, that impacts. And that will change from year to year. Students are getting dual enrollment. Uh, we do a fairly good job of that here also. Um, we do not participate in international baccalaureate, so those last two are don't even apply to us. And we really can't afford or want to afford to participate in those. The ACT participation, we're going to try to work, uh, if, we can, if we can get our new online curriculum, work on an ACT preparation course, which might help some of our students. Um, to get the number that's remediation free, uh, I think what we're working on, a transition to college math course, uh, might help in that regard. But the industry recognized credential, uh, right now this is zero and a zero percent. I think we have a few who were in Mr. Bedino's class last year that did get an industry credential. Um, and so that number, this is based on uh, 2014 statistics. So um, that number will improve, but with the online curriculum, the new one that we're looking at, um, I mentioned in the uh, letter that went out to the board, that there are core, career core academic, career, I can't talk, career choices. Uh, that there's three, four major areas, I think 12 programs, and all of them have an industry credential available to the student at the end. So we're trying to, um, implement that program not only with our options kids and our Quaker Tech kids, but also try to market it to the, to the Quaker Tech community, the kids that are in those online programs. If we can give them a diploma and some kind of an industry credential, it's not only going to make us look better on this particular report, but it's also going to be, uh, be better for some of the students. Some of the students, uh, kids in the middle. Questions? Okay, again, you've only got maybe, what, 40% of the data? Um, we'll get gap closing, yeah. Kind of makes you glaze over after a while, but we'll get the gap closing and we'll get the value added. And value added is always a stickler because if you do what you're supposed to and gain a year, you get a C. So. Kathy, is there any data out there that shows you how many kids opted out of these different tests? Yeah, we have all those numbers. So we can... Yeah. And actually, what I, what I did, uh, which we wouldn't like publicize, but I pulled the list of the kids. So I have actually every student's name like that took 8th grade science. And did they take the first part, they opted out of the second part. You can see their score on the first part. And it's every bit as good as those kids who took both parts and, and got a real high score. But they just didn't take it, so it got added in as a zero. So we know exactly who did and who didn't, you know, who opted out and who. And, I, and I'm not blaming the kids for opting out because it was, 
it was a very stressful situation for students and teachers and for everybody involved and they were taking tests every other day. Joe, do you have any comment to make on how bad that situation was? It was well, there was a snowball effect too. As, 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 when, when, when one student found out that his or her neighbor wasn't taking the test, they uh, they opted out. So it was, there was a snowball effect when the first kid um, decided, or the parent, first parent decided, my student's not going to take this. Then. And it was also a snow day effect because we had so many snow days. We had a lot of snows, there. yeah. And it was just a very stressful time. Can you opt out of them in the future? Yep. I think legislation permits that, and schools will not be punished. However, if a teacher or administrator is found encouraging students to opt out, which is the morally right thing to do, <laughs> um, they will be punished by the state. So, but Kathy, you said the public release of the data is end of this month. Was it February 25th? One of the papers that you have in here says the report card will be released January something. And obviously that didn't right. happen. The last date I remember was February 25th. So do you I, I know I know it was late February, February yeah. 20 something, yeah. So the caution we would want to share with our newspaper would be that when the data comes out, um, understand all of the implications yes. behind the data, not just the raw numbers that come from the state. And in all fairness, every district is every district dealing with this to a greater or lesser degree. Exactly. But the numbers uh, may not reflect what's actually going on in the classroom, particularly exactly. in this last year. Yeah. And, and the state, a, a in problem. their somewhat wisdom, has actually made this non-punitive for the next couple of years because they realize that they don't have the data that they need really to make an adequate assessment if we truly believe that these tests are assessing what we want kids to know. I think that's the news story as opposed to the numbers. Yes. At least for the current year. Exactly. All right. Kathy, we appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, Thanks for having us. help you if you have questions, stop in. If somebody rings your phone and you don't know what to say, <coughs> I'll try to number. help you. We know you're not. All right, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Have a safe trip home. Are you going to let me leave? Yeah. Say if you'd like. Hearing of public requests, I see none. Um, we have established this year, as we did at our organizational meeting, uh, committees. Uh, two of those committees did meet during the last uh, month. And so uh, first I'll turn it over to Ted to uh, summarize the Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting. Uh, the Buildings and Grounds Committee met on 2-9 in the committee. It's myself and Doug Marmot from the board are on it. Uh, what we discussed was the current and future PI projects and prioritized what is going to be completed in the summer of 2006. Uh, we're moving away from doing room renovations at Riley and Buckeye and concentrating on the high school this year. Uh, one of the main projects this year is the high school roof due to its age and leaks. Uh, all the projects are being reviewed to see if they qualify for an OSFC. If so, the district can get retroactive credits towards contributions under the OSFC formula. This allows the school district to subtract allowable amounts from its share of future renovations specific to that building. Current projects that we have going on now is painting of the stadium bathroom and locker rooms. Uh, for next month's meeting, they are going to come up with the new scopes for the room renovations and provide an itemized list with updated cost, actual cost, for the summer projects in 2016. Good questions for Ted. The second meeting of the month was finance. Uh, Steve Bailey. Yep, we met uh, February 10th. Uh, me and Ted are also on that committee. Uh, Howard was there also. Uh, we discussed the turf project, um, different funding options we had with that. Um, decided that we should uh, have most of our money in, hopefully by the time that uh, uh, turf gets going or we have to pay for it. Uh, Bob also brought up about RFPs for our banking services that he's going to um, come up with and then get out and advertise for our banking. Right now we bank with Chase and just looking at different options that our contracts up, correct? 
and uh, then we discussed the five-year forecast, just where we were, had a couple uh, things that we looked at, nothing major, and that was it. Questions for Steve? Okay. Financial report and report on bills. Uh, Bob? We have a, let's have a motion to approve the financials. So moved. Steve? Second. second. Okay, Bob, go ahead and clue us in. Okay, uh, for the month of January, um, the school district received $731,949 in foundation and our semi-annual casino money. We got about $51,000 out of the four casinos and racinos. So, yeah, I guess they're helping education like the lottery you know, did way back in the 70s. There we go. Um, in expenditures, General Fund paid $831,788 in salary and fringe benefits. District spent 69% of its supply budget, and that's about in line right from now to the end of the year. That will slow down. Open enrollment in, was, uh, we received $38,755, out 110317 with a net loss of $71,562. <coughs> The community cyber school deduction was $30,734. Um, if you remember the one chart that you have in your package, it shows the balance. Uh, January, we're below our average line. And in February, we are going to be receiving our tax advancements. We received one last Friday, and we'll see, we see one a week from this Friday for our two for this month, and we'll have two in March. Checks uh, written <coughs> numbers eight, um, 87,421 to 87,596 and 160, 107 and 162,901 dated January 1st to January 31st, 2016, totaling $1,481,171.53. Any questions? Questions for that? Uh, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Bricker? Yes. Mrs. Beck? Yes. Mr. Moffitt? Yes. Mr. Rowletter? Yes. Motion passed 5 0. Next on the agenda is approval of the consent agenda for February. I need a motion, please. Good. Doug, second. I'll second it. Angie? Um, any questions about the consent agenda? Comments? Bob, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Moffitt? Yes. Mrs. Beck? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Bricker? Yes. Mr. Rowletter? Yes. Motion passed 5 0. Executive session. The superintendent recommends the Board of Education adjourn into executive session for the purpose of the employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of an employer or official or the investigation of charges against an employee or official or regulated individual unless the employee, official or regulated individual requests a public hearing. No action will be taken. Can I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Angie? Second? Second. Steve? Uh, any questions about that? Bob? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Beck? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Berker? Yes. Mr. Moffitt? Yes. Mr. Rowletter? Yes. Motion passed 5 0. The board is in executive session. No action will be taken upon the return. Thank you.